Hey, what's up guys? It's Kale Brock here. I'm a surfer and a filmmaker and I wanted to go through my 2021 surfboard quiver, which has served me pretty well traveling around Australia. I remember when I was younger, growing up, I had to save for six months, 12 months, to buy a surfboard and it was my most cherished thing. I remember sleeping next to them at night with the first night I brought them home. So um, now that I'm sort of working on all these projects and having access to so many surfcraft, it's, uh, it's not something I take for granted. I used to be sort of a one board fits all kind of surfer. That's probably more a result of my uh, economic situation back then. Whereas now I do see a lot of value in carrying uh, that quiver of different surfboards. I think essentially for a lot of people, you need th three boards. You want your performance board for decent waves, your everyday kind of board, uh, that's the one. You want your, uh, like a fish, like a playful board for um, small waves and, and stuff like that. And then you want some sort of mid-length or uh, bigger board either for big waves, if that's your thing. If you're gonna surf waves that require you to get off your everyday performance board, or if you're not in that situation, then you want something to be able to play around on when the waves are really small, uh, so that you can still get out in the water uh, and still sort of tick that box and get, get wet. And that's why I love the idea of a mid-length or a foamy or something like that. I'm gonna start off with the board that I've ridden most throughout this year, and that's the winner of our board test at the start of the year, the Inferno 72 from Sharpeye. So this board really stood out in the board test from the get-go. Uh, it was just a really easy board to get used to, really alive, and it just wanted to go. Uh, there were times where it felt a little bit crazy, like it, was, it was, had too much get up and go, but uh, as I said in the board test numerous times, I much prefer to rein in a bit of a crazy board than try and uh, over surf a, a really stiff board. And um, this has been really nice to just ride in all sorts of conditions from uh, two foot up to even like four to five foot. Uh, and it's gone pretty well in most instances. I think one limitation that this board has is in really steep pockets. Uh, or, or taking drops trying to get barreled. There's a couple of times where I slide out at the tail end of the board, um, just because as Marcio said when I interviewed him, there is that upward flick at the end to give the tail some nice lift, and that's one of the reasons why it's got such nice speed and pivot, uh, but at the same time, it is a limitation in really steep waves because you can slide out a little bit. So that could be overcome potentially with some bigger fins, um, but I, I generally don't change things around <laughs> that much on board, so I just sort of go with it. This one's looking a little bit beat up. I had to take the nose. I did an air and sort of fell on the nose, but yeah, it's been a really nice board. The next one is my new board from Album. It's a light bender. So I actually haven't ridden this board before, but I know it's sort of a tweaked version of the Twinsman, uh, which I'll chat about after. But what I'm noticing with this board, it's a little bit thicker than the Twinsman is. Uh, it feels shorter when I hold it. I'm not sure if it is because I can't actually read the um, dimensions properly, but it is five foot, I'd say between five foot four and five foot six. Uh, what I noticed straight away is that duck build nose as well, similar to my Townsend, which I'll show you guys after. Um, so it's going to be an interesting ride, this one. A little bit more pulled in at the tail, I believe, than the Twinsman, at least from what I can see. I might try and rip into that tomorrow. So that's the only one I don't have any footage of. I'm really looking forward to trying this, particularly as a sort of um, nice, healthy segue intro into my twin fin board test that I'm running next year. Changing surfboards can change your surfing. I've coached quite a few people who have really been being held back by their surfboard, mostly uh, in the case that it's too small. 
and too undervolumed. So they're not getting enough paddle power beneath their chest and they're not able to catch waves effectively. I think that's a really common thing amongst intermediate surfers who rush off uh, those bigger boards onto a really tight performance board and it only hinders them. The next board is my Hayden Shapes Cohort. This was uh, a sort of last minute tweak in the Everyday Surfer board test. Initially I rode the PU version in the test and I found it a really nice board but it just didn't quite have that pop, that zing in, um, in, in, in waves which I really like in a board. Uh, whereas this one did, at least in, in smaller waves it had a little bit of limitation I felt but then I had a few sessions where the waves got a little bit steeper, a little bit more powerful, and the board really came to life, uh, particularly in the pocket and on rail at the same time. So it's become a really nice go-to for me when the waves are three to four foot and above, or I'm looking to just sort of um, get barreled. I know I'm probably gonna beat up my board or something. This thing's a beast in terms of construction, like it's held, it's, it's held everything so well, there's hardly any bumps normally. There's a lot of bumps on all my other boards. Um, I even dropped it on the nose and there was like almost nothing that happened. I dropped it from a fair height and only there's only a tiny little crack that I had to fix. So there's been a really nice all-rounder. My brother got one of these boards and he really likes it as well. So yeah, that's been a good go-to to keep in the quiver just when the waves get pretty good. We'll chat about the Twinsman now. The Twinsman, my dog obviously likes this board. <laughs> um, the Twinsman is uh, the best twin fin I've ever ridden before. Um, I'd probably only ridden maybe three twin fins before I rode this one. And it immediately rose to the top of the everyday surfer board test that we did. It was really surprising from a performance perspective. It was just really easy to surf. You didn't have to nurse it. Uh, and you could really put together some pretty solid, powerful turns. Uh, and you could also benefit from the twin fin elements. So it was a little bit looser. You could lose the tail when you want to. And I've since sort of become very used to this board and use it very regularly. Just if I'm looking to cruise a little bit more or uh, the waves are a little bit smaller than I'd like to ride um, the Sharp Eye on then you know pulling out this is, is has always been uh, an excellent choice and there's some really good ways around here in, in Adelaide that I really enjoy riding this board so this has been an absolute winner and even though my wax job's a bit dodgy <laughs> I really love it. I don't work with any particular brand of surfboard and that's been a really intentional thing with the channel because I want to maintain the integrity of the board test and make sure that it stays neutral. Um, we haven't inked with any particular board brand. So yeah, that's something that I'm always kind of thinking about because initially I thought it would be a really good idea to do that. I had worked on a signature board, uh, but then in the end just decided that I think neutrality was gonna be a lot more powerful because then I could sort of um, condense a lot of the marketing hype around surfboards and actually deliver as my product um, more tangible recommendations to you guys. Okay, so we'll have a look at uh, my mid-lengths now. So this is a topic that I'm pretty interested in pursuing a lot more of, uh, mid-length surfboards. We'll definitely do a mid-length surfboard test at some point, probably in a, another year and a half's time. What I really like about this board particularly is how easily it turns. So for a 6.6 six, uh, surfboard with, with so much volume in it, uh, it just really pivots on a dime and you can actually sort of almost surf it like you would a, a fish or something that I used to consider a fish. Obviously you can't rip it around as much as something like the Twinsman, but it carries so many other benefits in that it's got the volume, you can surf it in much smaller waves than, than the Twinsman. Um, your paddle power is really increased, there's a little bit more stability and this board is just great. I had a session out at Rabbits in, in Western Australia in Yelling Up and um, it was only one foot and there were these little lefts coming through and it was just, it was a dream. Uh, it was probably, again, one of those surprising moments where, I, where I've had a board just completely uh, exceed all my expectations when it comes to performance. So I really think this is a fantastic board for a 
for a mid-length play around thing um, for, for anyone who wants a mid-length. But I also think it's a really good board for uh, late beginners to intermediates to learn on and start learning turns on because it's it's got that stability and it's also got that nice pivot. Um, <clears throat> it's got three fin boxes, but I mean, I've only ridden it as a twin. I think if the waves got bigger, I might put a little trailer in there, but I just really like it as a twin, less resistance and a lot more zip. So yeah, love this board, it's really cool. So this board here is something that I asked Nathan at Album to uh, shape me. I asked for a board that would be good in big waves and then something that I could also ride at somewhere like the pass when it's small or something like that. So uh, I got this and it's a 70 Townsend um, and it's such a gorgeous board. It's got that nice pulled in tail. It's got a little bit of lift in the tail for small waves and of course it is a twin fin. I just find that again this board felt a little bit um, gunny when I first got it and that's because it's got those gun elements that I asked for but then once you actually pivot on the tail of the board it actually surfs really well. I even took it out the other day on some two foot surf and it just performed really well. Um, all, it almost turns as well as the, the mid strength, the chili, but not quite. Um, but obviously that's expected because this was built for big ways, not, not tiny ways, but um, to be honest, it goes really well in, in small surf as well. Uh, I love this board. It just paddles really well and um, just glides. And I think it really adds like a nice long board um, alternative. If you're not keen to ride like a nine foot board or an eight foot mal, um, you can ride a 7.0 mid length and still do some turns and kind of beat the crowd, which is always nice. The last board, that I'll talk about is the Smooth Star. So you guys know I've been a fan of Smooth Star ever since I sort of started this channel and when I was on How to Rip, um, the guys reached out early on and said, hey, do you wanna try one of these boards and let us know what you think? And I tried it with pretty low expectations because I had tried surf skates before and hated them. They were just so not close to surfing. And I jumped on this and I think I tried to skate it and the guys were like, no, 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 don't skate it. Just it literally imagine that you're surfing and it just clicked and it's um, it's such a, a close movement in terms of how um, it mimics surfing and te the same technique required in surfing is what you need here on the Smooth Star. So that's why I've incorporated it into the channel a lot. I've incorporated it into all my online courses and of course um, I incorporate it into all my retreats as well. So. This has been a fantastic addition to my quiver. If you could consider this something to be added into a quiver. Uh, I use it, I believe it's helped my surfing and I use it uh, regularly just to warm up or when I, was, when I was coming back from the knee injury, I was using this as a bit of a training tool, just a safe training tool, uh, just to condition myself and condition the body again to, to get back out there. So this was really good. It's been a pretty cracking uh, 20, 21 got to be in West Oz for nine months which was really cool I the unfortunate thing about this year is that I've been injured so much so my surfing has definitely not um, progressed in the way that I've wanted it to but at the same time it, when you are surfing and you are participating in a sport that's inherently dangerous uh, you'd be pretty lucky to never get injured throughout your career so I've been pretty lucky up until this point Early in the, earlier in the year I broke my toe, later in the year I uh, blew my MCL, but now I'm back on the mend and I think with some good training and some good conditioning I can maintain this level and hopefully improve my surfing next year. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. If you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel because we've got a whole lot of cool exciting stuff coming up in 2022 including a big twin fin board test and maybe uh, some other really exciting things that I won't tell you about so smash that like button let me know in the comments what boards do you have. I'd love to hear what boards do you think everybody should have. Thanks so much for watching I'll see you guys soon.